and welcome back to Kat's Creations and I am Kat welcoming you to our design studio where today I'm going to teach you how to make a patriotic mailbox swag using a three foot piece of garland. So if you have always wanted to learn how to make a mailbox swag, I'm going to show you how simple it is to do that with probably most of the materials you have um, around you. So um, if this is your first time joining us, welcome. Uh, let me know where you're from. I'd like to, um, I always like to know how far out people are joining us. So, um, and you never know, uh, a lot of people uh, meet fellow crafters just based on Facebook lives. So welcome to um, new timers or first time. Wow. Thinking two different things at the same time. Welcome uh, first time viewers. And for those of you that are coming back and joining me, welcome. So um, mailbox swags are actually pretty popular. I didn't realize that until I moved a little bit further out into more of the rural area and, you know, where you still have mailboxes that um, you can decorate. So I'm going to show you how super simple that is to do. Um, if you are joining me for the first time, if you guys can do me a favor and click like on this page. Um, and then the three dots off to the right, uh, it will allow you to actually follow the page. That way you'll be notified whenever I go live. So, and then of course, if you want to have this video handy, once you round up all of your supplies, um, just click the share button. It shares it to your Facebook page and then that way you have it accessible for whatever you need. So, welcome to those of you that are joining it. I'm gonna go ahead and pan you down. We're gonna get started. So hang tight. We're gonna take a small little trip down south and make sure that we are lined up to where you can pretty much see everything. Looks like we're good. So um, what I am using for my base is just a three foot piece of garland. Now at the end of the Christmas season, I would encourage you all to go to Hobby Lobby or <clears throat> Joann's and Michael's and pick those up when they're like 80% off. Sometimes you can get them for 90% off and you might go, well, why? I'm not going to make a garland. I'm not going to sell a garland. But what we forget is how versatile a piece of garland can be to be a base for a centerpiece, a table arrangement, mailbox swag, lantern swag, um, because it's already got all the the little twist ties already put on for us. So we're not going to see any of this green by the time we're done. And this was part of a nine foot um, garland, which means that if you cut that down into usable pieces, you know, mailbox swags are basically 36 inches. They could be a little bit longer, but I'm going with 36. So I just stretch this out the length of my cutting mat and go ahead and snip it. And then this one is a little less like it doesn't have as much as like the Hobby Lobby ones do. This one is from Joann's, but um, Hobby Lobby, when I went back to get them, were pretty much out of everything that they had. So what you want to do is go through and pull all the twist ties out because we know how they get all bunched up. Um, and then this is going to be our usable base here for what we're doing. Now this is still isn't gonna look too pretty by the time we are finished, um, just because it lacks, like I think Hobby Lobby's is probably three times thicker than this, but I also wanna be able to show you, you know, if you don't have something, you don't have a Hobby Lobby, but you're able to score, or maybe you just have this garland laying around at home, how simple it is to do this. So what you want, ideally is a piece on both sides so that it's ready to hold mesh when we get ready to plop this in. So that's about is what it looks like. So this is very, very thin. You could double it up, but there's no need to do that because all we need these um, tinsel ties or pine ties to do is just hold our mesh. And so I'm going with a, whatchamacallit, uh, it's a metallic wide foil, royal blue, and then we're doing a red with the white stripe so that we can keep this patriotic, which is great because this can go up from now all the way just before uh, September, right before fall. So this is gonna stay up uh, quite a ways. And because it is so versatile, you could use it as a table runner. You could use it you know, as a mailbox swag. You can kind of pick it up 
and do different things with it. So these are all cut to 12 inch pieces. Let me go ahead and get my comments up so I can read your comments. Okay. And hi, Lynn. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Kathy. She said if you would have taken that cheaper one like you've got, made it six feet, folded it in half, right, it would have given me a fluffier one, but I don't need it. All I need it to do is to be able to hold the mesh. So again, these are cut to 12 inch pieces and we're just going to ruffle these. And we're gonna start at one end and we are going to add these to our garland. This is just to create, I'm trying to get this one um, to hold that. So there's our first piece. And I'm just gonna kind of toggle these back and forth because, um, you know, I guess if you were, it depends on what you're trying to make. This is what it all boils down to. So I'm gonna keep this one a little closer to this side. I have 12 pieces cut, so we'll see how these work. So I'm just gonna alternate these, red, white, blue, red, white, blue, all the way down. Okay. So again, and I'm trying to place them in a wide variety of different ways. Some of them I'll lay um, vertically, some of them I will lay um, horizontally. But um, you can even get uh, a form that is called a garland form. And all it is is a piece of wire with um, tinsel ties on it that um, serve the same purpose. So I'm going to put this one in here. I think I'm missing a twist tie in here. Looks like it's a single. Let's see. Can we borrow? We could probably borrow. Okay, let's pull this one out. That's a little bit more prominent all the way through. All we're doing is adding red, white, and blue. So that when it goes on the mailbox, all you're going to see is a big spray of red, white, and blue. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this one right inside to a simple twist. And then we're ready for our next piece. So this is about, once this piece goes in, it's halfway. We should be halfway through our mesh. And all it is doing is giving us a base to work off of, just like that. Here's my next piece already. that one. I'm gonna grab. This one's a little, that's weird. That just feels like it could come off pretty easily. But we'll use it anyway. Okay, right in here we have our blue. See, it's already looking a lot best, a lot more festive than just that thin mesh. And then by, like I said, of course, by the time we finish, um, you won't even know that it's an um, evergreen base. Okay, we'll grab this one. Two more pieces of mesh. Too. And the last piece. Let's get that. I'm not going to go completely all the way to the total, total end. I'm going to kind of come up just a touch. Probably right in here. But I will let that hang over sideways. Okay. 
So there is our Deco Mesh mailbox swag. And so one of the things I want you to consider when you're building a mailbox swag is that this is going to go in, um, it's going to go in this type of a shape, but we're building it flat. So everything that you see that looks very static or, you know, kind of cascading off the side, it's meant to be that way because we're building it flat, but here is, you know, our end to ends. So right up here between this red and blue, if we pull these down together, here's our halfway point right up here, right here, which is where we're going to place the bow. So we're going to go ahead and make the bow and then we're going to finish decorating the rest. And the bow is designed to be this center piece on the top of your mailbox. So the bow is leaning a little bit towards the front and then its tails will kind of cascade down. So this sits on top of the mailbox and then everything else that we do is going to go all the way down the sides of our mailbox. So I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to grab our ribbons and we're going to make a super cute bow. So really quick before I do that, I need to find out what is the longest length and loop size that I want to utilize. So this is ribbon from Michaels and I think pretty much right about there is a nice cute um, cascade that's going to cascade down over the top of my mailbox. So I'm feeling like that's 10. It is. So that sets the precedence for that. So we are going to dovetail this, which is just bring your wired edges together. You're going to cut from the fold out to the wired point. Okay. Now this design is vertical, which means that we can keep it all going in the same direction with a simple adjustment. So we're measuring out 10 inches. We're going to gather and twist. And then we're going to do five inch loops is where I think I want this one to be. Not too tall. Wow, that is five and a half. I think we're going to go five and a half. I like where that sits. So measure both sides. So that way we are exact on both of those. And then we're going to take this one back out 10 inches. And we're going to do our dovetail cut just like that. And if you notice, we have the writing this way, the writing's correct this way, the writing is correct that way, but on this one, it's upside down. So all we need to do is just twist the loop the other way, and now everything is going in the right direction. Our next ribbon we're gonna use is this red, white, and blue striped. Um, I believe all the ribbon except for one is, or you could find at Craft Outlet. Um, I think most of the patriotic stuff now is starting to um, be sold out. So this is just a red, white, and blue striped. We're doing this at nine and a half inches. I'm going to twist, place that on the inside. Now we're going to do a nine inch loop. So just twist, place it on the inside. I keep it right on the 10 inch mark so that when I go to stretch my loop out, it should stop and it does right on the five inch line, which lets me know, hey, we're at a five inch loop. And then we're gonna go all the way back out, nine and a half inches. We're going to do a dovetail cut. There we go. That one is down. And then we have, I think what I want, these are the ribbons that I've picked. This is called the wavy stars and stripes. And then I have a blue diagonal. And then we're doing a red, white, a red and white gingham. 
So I think I kind of like the way that look is because I want to end with this on top. So I'm going to go ahead and do my gingham next. And I'll go ahead and take that off. And we're going to go nine inches for this. We're going to do the same thing. Twist, place on the inside. This is going to be a four and a half inch loop. So each loop that we're putting in is going to come down um, a half an inch on the loop on the tail side and half an inch on the loops. So we started with five and a half, then it's five, then four and a half. And then we're just gonna introduce another two. So we have a pretty nice full bow for this look. Right at nine. Our dovetail. Okay, this one is all set. We'll get that situated a little bit better so it looks a little nicer on the inside. And we're going to take our diagonal. Same thing. Dovetail cut. This one's going to be eight and a half inches and only a four inch loop. Okay up and over. Four inches out. Wanted to fix the other one there. There's my four. I like these colors together. It's definitely very 4th of July with the solid royal blue. A lot of the glitter. But I don't want to go all glitter. Okay. There's that. Hi Karen, how are you? Okay. Let's go ahead and put a fresh cut. And then we'll dovetail. And this one's going to be eight inch with a three and a half inch loop. So eight inch tail. And a three and a half inch loop. I need to really bring that one in because three and a half inches is about as small as I go. Because then at that point, it starts looking like, hmm, there's not an awful lot there. Okay, right here. Dovetail this. And we are all set there. There we go. Now we're squared. Um, we will take pipe cleaner. I'm trying to decide what color. I think we'll go with white. So making a loop helps prepare you being able to pick this up first without fumbling your stack. We're going to just drop that in the center. We're going to hold it at the bottom and we're going to twist. And we're fluffing on this, the mailbox swag. So, we'll bring our mailbox swag back on over. We said right here is where our bow's gonna go. I wanna make sure though that my wording on my ribbon matches. So we are going right in here. This is where we said it's the halfway point. So I'll bring that all the way through, push that down, get our twist ties twisted, 
And because this sits on our mailbox, we want to make sure that all of our tails come to the front for now. So we're making sure everything folds down, 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 because I'll show you here in a second. Um, when we fold it like this and put it on top of our mailbox, we need the bow to sit on top. So we want the tails, once we get it up on top of the mailbox, we can readjust the top, the tails, but it's just easier to have them down in front. And then I'm simply, here's the other tail. You are on this side, cheater. I tried to go around the other side. Okay, we're gonna open our loops on the bottom, starting on the bottom here. So I have the God Bless America at the bottom. And then here, we're gonna switch that up and put the, start, the stripes at the bottom and the God Bless America a little higher up. Bring this down. And then we're gonna grab the next two. I'm gonna do these two this way. Opposites on the opposite side. And then we're gonna put our wavy stars and stripes right in the center. And then we will do the little curl technique, which is just running your fingers down underneath the ribbon. That kind of puts that little curl back in. And then that's important for cascading over the top of our um, mailbox. So let's do that. Let's pull this one a little further over here. This one comes here. There we go. I'm trying to get this one. There it goes. To lay correctly. So if we take it, tilt it, turn it to the side, see how our bow now we'll be at the center and then we'll now be decorating the sides that are going to go down along the side. Now, if you were doing this as a centerpiece, it's super simple. You would just rearrange your ties to have um, some of your ties here and, or some of your tails here, some of your tails here and just redress that. But you could easily take it off your mailbox swag for a last minute, really gorgeous um, centerpiece to add to your barbecue table or whatever um, if you have a last minute party and you're like oh darn it I don't have anything um, to really decorate with you can take your mailbox swag off and do that um, so we're going to start with large items and then work down um, have a wide variety of different things that we're going to try um, I have these red and white balls which are from Hobby Lobby so we're going to add a red and a white on each side. I think they come in like a 12 pack. So you could wire these in if you wanted to make it to where you could take things apart. I just prefer to glue things in because I don't want them to fall out. And then also understand this theory that when you bend your mailbox swag, you have this area underneath the bow that you need to address because when this sits on the top, it's going to kind of expose this area. So if all we do is decorate from here down, we're going to miss this part on the mailbox itself. So we are going to, I think this pulls out. I have my glue skillet here. I am going to, I should have done the white one. Let's go ahead and put this one down here in the blue area. So I'm just going to attach that there. I wasn't thinking we were putting it on red and it's predominantly more red. I'm going to place this one up here. Okay, so we have red. We're going to do the exact same thing, except here it's a little bit opposite because um, the way the pattern is. So we're going to start with our red 
and then add our white. So big dollop of glue. There's our red. And here is our white. Okay. Take those out. Now we're going to come in with some different color blues. So I have blues in glitter, flat, and satin. They do not all have to match, but I like to take the hangers off of them because if you just rely on the hangers, sometimes those have a tendency of falling off, sometimes. So I'm just gonna attach that there, right next to my white. I have my red, let's grab another glitter. We're gonna attach this one right here on the opposite side, just like that. And our bow is gonna get refluffed a handful of times. Now I'm gonna add another red. So we're gonna take the red glitter I'm going to tuck this one right in here with our white. We're going to do the same on this side, except I think I'm going to put another blue. Uh, do I want to do blue? Do I want to do white? I know these are going to go down a little bit further. So we have a mix of colors that occupy a large space. So I might just do, could do blue on this side and do red on that side. I think that works, which means that we need a white. So let's do, let's see if we have another white baseball. So we have another white. So we're gonna take a white, tuck this one right in here, and then we're gonna go ahead and play with these two. Take all the hooks off. Add our red down in here. We'll add our blue. in. So there's those. And now we'll grab the other side. So I'm just going to pivot this around so that we're back up here. Okay. I think can't do that. I think we have to do blue. And then we're going to need another white to go in here. And then I think that should be fine. I think. I had a whole bunch of them in different sizes and shapes. So we will add this one down in here. Sometimes I can pull them off and then we'll do the same for up in here. And what that does is you could choose to do florals. Like I do have um, red, white, and blue roses. We could come in and incorporate those when we might. Um, I do have some red and blue stars, which we might add in here. It just depends on how they look. Like, because when I'm decorating this, I have to look at it from a sideways point of view. Like, I like the star to be able to come here. 
That one looks great like that. Maybe we'll put that one there. This will kind of be off more to the side. I think I kind of like that. Um, I have to do some thinking on, do I think glue will hold up if we put those in? I think this is where I'm gonna have to use my glue gun to spot, put these in where I want. There we go. And then right here at the top. So these ones go to the bottom and this sits up at the top like that. The little star. I don't know if you guys can see that. This is the little star. I'm trying to, there it goes, kind of like that. So I'm just adding little stars. Same way, thick coat of glue at the very bottom, one at the top to attach it to the ball, kind of swish those kind of in at an angle. There's those two. So you've added red and white stars. I'm going to come back over to the other side. <sighs> oh, hi, Linda. She says, I'm going to have to watch a replay. We're getting our spring weather. So are we. Our trees are just exploding right now with color. Do I want white? I think I want the blue up here. So we're going to put the blue. I'll have to play with placement there. But probably something along that for here. I have to just be cautious that I am looking at how it lays on a down because when these sit up, I need to make sure that the stars are where the stars are, where they need to be. And I always put, I always should be holding it where it needs to go. So I have an, two bottoms and the upper. So I'm just gonna nestle those right inside there. And we'll put our blue, kind of tuck that one. I want it a little bit further over here. Maybe I'll do it that way. I kind of like that look. I'm trying to do opposites, but it's just not working out that way. And we'll have that one stretch up a little further. Okay. Tops, bottom, gotta go to the other side or my bottom. And we're gonna plop that one right down on the inside. Oh, it looks so festive and so fun. I can't wait to see what this is gonna look like on um, the mailbox. So, um, we do have some smaller balls that we can put in here. I don't, I don't have the blue ones. I would have to look, I'm sure I do. I just don't know where they are. But I buy these every year at Joann's at the end of their season. So we have white and we have the red. So like we can kind of come in and add some little pops of color like there. We can add that in there. We can come up in here. Um, let's add a red. I'll probably put a red one there and a white one to fill up our space. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to tuck that in just to fill. Side. 
And then we're also going to do them here at the end. We did that. Put that inside. And then we'll take the red. And we'll kind of tuck these in at the very bottom. Down in there. Do I want those there? Yes, I think I do. Mm, I'm going to hold off on those because I'm like looking at other things that I have. And I want to make sure that everything's in the right spot. So, oops. Not going to be able to use. Now we can. We can use that. We can trim that right up in there. We will add another white. There's that. We'll tuck in a red. Right there. Those are super cute. Okay. What else, what else are we going to add? Um, so I have these star picks. Let me find it. And I don't know where I got them from. It's probably Craft Outlet. So we're going to add some of these stars, some little curly cues. These are awesome because even if you have, like if you don't have these, you could take, um, let's see where I have them. Um, you could take a pipe cleaner like this and run it around your finger, right? Just like so, or around a pencil. So just twist it around your finger. And now you have these little spiral curly cues. So you can pick those up. I think the Dollar Tree carries these, right? Or will be carrying them. Um, you can add a cute little... Let me find my scatters and fillers. You can add a super cute little um, a little ball on the end. So you just simply poke them into your star foam ball. Pull your pipe cleaner out. We're going to just place a dab of glue right where we had where it went in. We're going to go ahead and place that on the inside. And then you have these nice little curly cues that we can just um, attach wherever we want. Wherever we want, just a fun little spray of color. So there's just movement and I like having things that just kind of spray off of the sides. So I'm going to do the same thing with these. So I'm just going to remove these. I'm going to glue little balls on the end. And that's a really simple um, and you can do these even on your wreaths, you know, just make sure you can have them kind of coming out off the side of your bow. We're going to have this one down here. And you're going to just check that in the back. So we have some fun movement there. We will find the blue ones. Oh, let's see. Where are the other colors? Blue. Okay. 
Okay. We have blue, but it's more turquoisey blue. I mean, it kind of falls in line with these, but it's just super easy to do these with the um, sparklies. And then we'll just add the little blue balls at the end. And we'll have this one. Let's see, where do we want to put that one? I'd like it down in here. So there's some fun little picks. We are also going to use some of the stars that are on there. I'm going to take this blue one because there's only one blue one that I can find. Um, and we're going to put a red ball on the end. Just trying to find the right size. And I'm going to put this outside on my, um, outside the bow. So that, because there's only one. I do have silver. I have gold. But I'm going to kind of tuck this one right here inside my bow because I am going to have like these little sprays kind of coming off the top. So when it sits on the mailbox, we have some movement there. Now we can remove that. Let's spin this over here so we can add our little curly cues over here. Trying to find the bigger blows. There we go. What do you guys think of the little curly cues? Have you ever thought about putting those in a wreath design? Just like so. I'll have this one coming out the other side. There we go there. So we have both of those. I think I'm going to put two more towards the bottom. Let's do red and then we'll also do silver. So we'll do red with a, um, let's do a white ball on top. So we're going to have these ones come down a little bit further. So I'm going to kind of tuck this one down in here. Just like that. We'll place another one on the opposite side. As soon as I can find my legs. So that's all I'm doing is twisting them around my finger, pulling them off, kind of uncoiling them. We need to white. I'm trying to find a white glitter. Where's our white glitter? this one on. We'll have that kind of curl out towards the bottom of that. There's that one. So now we're going back over to the other side and we'll add the two at the lower half. So just run it over your fingers or you can do it it's 
easier to do it on our fingers so that we don't have to go get a pen or a pencil. I like to spring them out just a touch. There's our little white ball. Push those on. Place that inside. This one's gonna kind of, kind of want it in here. Like tuck that inside up underneath my little star. So we'll see if we can get that to go. I want it under so that it springs out. And one more. Run it all the way through. And then we'll add in some stars so that we have stars, stripes, little curly cues. Another one of these. Slide that in. Trying to find placement for it. Probably going to do something down in here. Which is nice because then when the wind hits those, you're going to have some nice movement. Okay, so we've got curly cues, and then we also have foam stars, but I need to get rid of this green because I don't want to see green. So what I think I'm going to do is we're going to add some white balls down here. Let's go ahead and tuck those in. And you can even take your tinsel ties and tuck them in if you want. Then I'm going to come in with some stars like so. Not. I'll have to use a red. Tuck in some red. Like maybe we'll tuck a red in here. Let's see. We can tuck those in the back side. Of our design. So let's go ahead and attach the blue star so it won't move. And then we're going to take this and bring that around the back. And we'll add our red star down here. Um, don't want that there. I'm kind of like just looking at a wide variety of different things that I want to tuck in, and the white just doesn't want to go anywhere. Like I'm gonna tuck in a red star right there. Oh, we can put the white star on the other side by the red glitter ball. So I'm going to pick this up and tuck that right in. So as you can see, I'm kind of building this whole second. Carol says, my curly cues don't turn out as cute as yours do. All you have to do is um, just twist them around a pin and then just kind of pull them out in whatever direction you want. So I'm just going to use this um, piece of tinsel I have here. And I'm going to place a small star on the end, like this, I think. Because these came off of my little white balls. So we have these. We have smaller stars we can tuck in if we want. Not really seeing a need there. Let's see, do we have a small white one? Yes. So we can tuck in like a little white one right there. Okay. 
There's our white. So see how we're slowly eliminating the green. Now I gotta go to the other side and do that. So we're gonna go over here. So this side is almost finished. So now we've gotta kind of come back in and uh, fill in this side. So I'm just kind of matching stuff as we go. Like I said, again, you could come in with florals and add florals to that. So I'm just gonna take my white ball. So I'm taking my green, I'm taking my green to the back. And then we're gonna take blue star. And we're gonna take in a blue star. And we need a red star because that's gonna go down here at the end. Just like so. And then we need a baby white, which is probably gonna go in here, because this is gonna go to the back. Then we have to take our little tinsel tie and put our blue star on it. And that's going at the bottom. So all I'm doing is just looking at what we've done on one end and making sure this matches. And then this is gonna kind of, yes, it goes between the red and the white. So right in there. That's so pretty. Okay, what else did we do? Um, I thought we added blue. Like I'm looking at this side and saying, oh, we should add blue in there. So there's our blue. So we added a blue star in there. Not there. I think we need a red one. Like I like the red. So red or white. I like the white in there. So there's white. As we come up, we're going to tuck in some white stars up here. Some red stars, some blue stars, because that is under our bow. So this is the area that we need to make sure that we are tucking items up under, because remember this side peels down. I'm just pulling out all my glue threads. Plunging those back on the inside. Okay. We are going to tuck that in. We're going to go ahead and pull this red star there. Okay, now I think I have mixed both of them perfectly. It's funny, this one was never really attached. I just placed it there. I was like looking up and seeing that. I'm like, we never added anything there. Okay. Now we're gonna pull these off. So, super simple. They're all on little picks. They don't wanna cut at the same time. These are the same things as the foam stars, but these ones are on picks, so they kind of stick out a little bit further. So we can just tuck those in. So I'm working down the bottom. To finish the bottom, 
I'll go over here. our stars. So these are nice because they already have an elevated pick on them. So I can pretty much place them wherever I want them to be. There's a couple more on here. I don't know if we can use the big ones, but we'll snip them off since this pick is pretty much done. And we'll tuck the larger ones towards the top. We'll try to add these blue. Add that one there. Okay, big ones, we'll set those aside. I have two more smalls. there and then those two large ones I'm going to just go up under my bow I'm going to place this one here and on the other side again up under your bow because these are the areas we forget until you place it on your mailbox and you're like oh wait we have we have gaps we have places where there's um, a need for us to place something there. Okay. Um, I do have one item that we're going to place inside our bow, which is this little um, firecracker. I only have one because I think I did it um, on another design. And then I just had one left over. So this is why I have a tendency of not... Um, you need to use all the picks. It's like pointless just to have one left. So I think I'm going to place that at the top, but I want to make sure that the pick doesn't come out. So there's that. I'm going to place that in the top so that it kind of pops up in a way from our center like that so that when it sits on the mailbox we have a firecracker spray and then I have a couple let's see do I want to put these in I really like these and I've had them for so long. Let me cut this. I'm going to put glue on the end so they don't slide all the way down. So I'm just gonna let that sit. So there's that one. same thing here just to make sure these don't come off their ends just making sure okay so I've broken down those picks But I was going to make sure our balls 
don't roll all the way down. So the longer ones are going to go in our bow and the shorter ones like these are going to, let's see, I want to place these off to this side. Let's put the tall ones in first. Because those are just going to tuck in our bow. Here's our other tall one. I can't wait to show you what this looks like when it's actually on the mailbox. So there we have some of those. I think I'm going to put the stars at the very bottom. You know the ends that we have down here? I think I'm just going to kind of have these come down the bottom. So that one's going to be there and the other side. getting larger. It's getting harder to move this all the way around. And okay, we're going to have this one at the bottom. And then the dilemma is I have one more, right? So I have one more stuck on a pick because you can't just use the one. Well, actually I could. Let's leave this off. Go ahead and remove our glue threads and then we're just going to add in i think i have some spaces where i think i want to add some flux tubing so i have this in red white and blue so i'm just looking at some areas where i just want to fill with some color Yes, this list is perfect. It's perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh. So I'm just going to take a pipe cleaner. Just to keep them in, in place. And then also to give me um, a way to put them in. So like right in here by this red wash. I turn this around right in here by the red it feels empty but if I come in here with the flex tubing it like elevates that look so nice so just a little dab of glue and then we just tuck that in right there and I love the way that looks. So all I'm doing is taking flex tubing and just kind of going back and forth. Oops. Um, and I'm making like a little six loop bundle. Just like that. So it's in a nice little bundle. We're taking white pipe cleaner to tie the bundle. We'll twist it. Snip that off. And then remember the areas that I told you? We need to make sure are all completely filled. This one's going to go right up on top. Let's use the glue gun because the glue skillet is a little too close to our bundle. So right up in here, we're just going to tuck that in. It's a nice little cute pop of color. Let's see if I can do this again. So I'm leaving probably about a three inch tail and then just kind of going back and forth, making sure my loops are all the same. 
So, long tail, little bundle. Could just use this one. Could just cut the pipe cleaners in half. So, we're just twisting to keep the bundle together. of adding these little pops like there'll be another one right here just so that they go all the way in and it fills the sections between now I'm like where did I have that Right in here. Okay. So we still have our curly cues, but we're just adding the flex tubing. And I've had some of this flex tubing forever. And so I'm like, I never use it. So I'm like, it's just a nice way to add just another sparkle and color. So I'm just using all those leftover pieces. And I said that we're gonna add one probably in here. So we'll add one there and then we'll add one at the very bottom. guys think so far we're just about done this was my final um, final look was just taking the flex shaping you could take like a lot of us have uh, you might have red flex tubing or red or blue or white and you can just do like two loops of red add the two loops of white um, add in whatever colors you'd like to see so we're just going to pop that down in the bottom to get rid of the last of our green I just don't want to see green can't really have green when we have red, white, and blue, right? There's that one. And we've done there, we've done here. Not a little bit there, but I can fix that with. Let's see what color do we need? Blue. Let's do bigger blue. Let's get rid of that green because I don't want to see any green. So we're just going to take a little dab of blue. Fix that green. Okay, this side is complete. We are done with that side. So now I just got to add flex tubing to the other side. And I just unspooled my little curly Q right here. Okay, move that over, pull this on the inside, we'll add, how many bundles? One, two, three, four. We made four. Okay, so we're going to add four more. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll take our pipe cleaner. Just split it in half. And these are so easy to attach. Oh, we did one here. Okay. You guys didn't tell me we already had one there. So we already had one right there. So we're gonna make one 
to kind of tuck in here? Or do we want to add it here? Let me get rid of the excess. I think we'll do there. And then I'll do there. And then one at the very bottom. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. Just to make sure that they all come out the same. And you don't have to do them as big. And you don't have to do a ton. You can just have them sit like so. Nip that off. Gonna take that. We're gonna tuck that all the way inside, go under, and then there's that. And then let's glue this one because we didn't glue that one in place. And you can just set stuff in and then take your glue gun and then just pick it up and move it in any position you want. Okay, go in. There we go. And then the scatters and fillers are perfect for hiding any remnants of green that you don't wanna see, like I see a green right here, but I can just take that and pull that around the back. That remedied that problem. This, again, take them and tuck them in the back. And then we need one more for the bottom. And then we're finished. And I can't wait to show you what it looks like on the mailbox. I will take a picture and I will post it. I need to do a video because everyone's like, how do you attach it to your mailbox? And it's super simple. But I think until I show, um, you basically use the little the things your twist ties on your garland you twist tie that in the back on your ends you bring your ends together and then you twist tie it Let us see. I'm trying to get that under. See, sometimes we get them in a really good spot and you don't want to pull them back out. So just use your glue and kind of tuck them inside. And I am using some scatters and fillers to fill my nicks and crannies where I'm still seeing like I can kind of tuck it on the inside and see little bits of green, but I don't want to see those. So I'm just using the little scatter and filler balls, just like that. Cause those fit in the tiniest little spots. But we're all done. Let me show you what this looks like. Try to hold it up so you can get a good visual. Okay. So I know it's kind of difficult to imagine, but here is our bow. This is going to kind of drape. We have our little shooting stars and our firecrackers. I might even come back in and add a couple more of the curly cues on the red so that it kind of just adds in here but everything else is all done and all that from a very generic evergreen garland that was cut to three foot lengths so what questions do you guys have that i can answer for you today hi annette hi pam hi marilyn Yes, I am live now. Okay. Well, I am going to 
add a couple more little curly cues to the top in our red. And then I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the mailbox. So again, here's our little curly cue. We add those up, right? Just go around your finger. We just attach a styrofoam ball to the end. And then we want to add a dab of glue to make sure that doesn't pop off. And then I'm going to come in right underneath here. And I'm going to have this ones come out to the side like that. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue trying to uh, make sure it doesn't drip any place I don't want it to. There's one. And then we'll add one to the other side and it is officially done. Carol, it's not a replay yet, but it will be here in a second. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for joining me and um, I will talk to you all soon. Have a blessed weekend if I don't talk to you guys before then. So I will talk to you later. Bye for now, everyone.